Hey, welcome back to another Black City Coffee vlog. In this video, Drink Gold Be Gold. Send me some questions. All right, both batches, 175 grams, reference two, had 412 charge, and reference three, around 412, because I'm not preheating my drum. It helps reduce scorching. What helps reduce scorching? The small batch size. If these don't cup well, I know I'll have to lower the charge for sure. Okay. The 412 without a soak really ran through each stage, ended with 12% development. That's the third phase, okay? Yeah, we see that, 12. This one's 10, so we're talking about this one, okay? Reference three, same charge with soak at turning point at 140, at 140. That's, that's this one, 142. And then 75% power through dry end, okay? And then 50%, you can see the air adjustment too, just a little to help with smoke. Dropped at 418, other one dropped at 421, okay? Those are like, to me, full city temperatures. And depending on the green, it could even be like a full city plus temperature. Reference three, I only have two pictures here. Drink gold, be gold. 13% development. I don't see that one. Okay, I'll just take your word for it. There's another picture with 13% development. From what I've read, a slightly longer roast versus like a tight 1030 roast because the type of heat source helps mitigate a longer roast, but we will see how it cups. <clears throat> okay. Um, all right. 412 on the charge. This is on a Baymore. So we're talking about electric power and with electric power comes a delay when you make a decision at your roaster. Uh, as I remember with my hot top, which was an electric powered roaster. So there's electric coil heating everything. Yeah, there's a drum in there. 500 bucks for this guy. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. Yeah, there, it's not cheap roasting coffee, even though we all thought we would save money, didn't we? A three minute middle, a one minute last phase. Okay. You know, when y'all send me roast curves, it's good to let me know what your goals are. Because otherwise I don't know what your goals are. <laughs> but that would be helpful. I mean, I'll ask you on the, on the, on the DM. 436, yeah, that's good. 310. This looks like a nice light roast. First crack is at 746 at 409. Okay, so you hit first crack rather uh, later on this. And yes, it could be because of your probe. And yes, because it's on a different machine. We cannot compare apples to oranges. We have to compare oranges to oranges. And I don't have a Baymore, so you know. Uh, okay. <clears throat> Stepping down in heat, cranking up air as you go along. This looks fairly good. You know what I mean? Like, you're doing everything that I would do if I had this machine. You seem to have a little bit more control with this one on reference to. And that's tough because of that delay with that electric coil, you know. You make a decision and I don't know how long you can expect. Is it like a 10 second delay? Is it a 15 second delay? Is it a 30 second delay before you see, you see a change? Or you see the thing that you did on the machine effect change, you know what I mean? Um, drop is at 850. Okay, so this would be like an aggressive roast, right? This one's at 31338. So what I would imagine is, is reference two to be much more sweeter cup. Much longer you stretch this a lot. So we have a six minute 30 on the first phase, five minutes on the second phase, and then a 1.2. Our, uh, one minute 22 on the last phase. Wow. Okay. And we're dropping at 418. Yeah. Me, if I were to roast um, any one of my naturals at this level, it would be like full city plus plus, or even it might be even dark. It might taste pretty, pretty roasty. But, um, and that's why we have to remember as we, we, learn from other roasters even me as a mill city roaster with a drum roaster gas powered if i go and look at somebody who has a loring or if i go and look at somebody who has like the the, the
the air roasters or any roaster that isn't exactly like mine within a, within a similar situation, we're going to get some differences. And uh, I always like to point that out because I, I didn't uh, hear that in the beginning of my roasting journey, which was very frustrating, you know, because I was like, why doesn't mine look like yours? And that's not what it's about, right? It's really about understanding your machine, machine operation. So whatever machine you got, learning how to operate it, learning its uh, limits, where it excels, where it fails, you know, um, and understanding that, accepting that, and then, and then having the wherewithal to roast the best cup that you can out of that machine, whether it's Baymore, Mill City Roast, or Cafe Genie, something, right? It doesn't matter. If you understand how the machine works, um, I think you can roast a really good cup of coffee. Now, uh, gold. Did you, what did you say about the cupping? I have that here in my, so far both coffees passed the before 24 hour brew, as in they taste good, so hopefully they open up a bit more. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, this was a Honduras honey process um, coffee from Sweet Maria's, 760 a pound, expensive. Score is 87.8, high scoring coffee. Honey process, we were talking a lot about honey processed, right? City to full city plus. Hey, that's what you did, gold. Yeah, you did a city and you did a full city plus to me in the numbers, you know what I mean? I want you to let me know when you cup these, can you, can you correlate that for me? And then uh, what's the elevation on it? 16.50, okay, well, both charging high to get enough energy. Your peak ROI is reaching 40, I like that. I like how much energy you're having in here, um, in this roast, and going for it. And I think you need to do that. I think in general, as I remember, I have to always like go back in time in my brain, with an electric, smaller roaster you're going to be playing with a lot higher temperatures it's a lot more volatile so you need that extra bit of energy for that delay because it's an electric machine so yeah this makes total sense to be charging over 400 um, whereas me with my gas powered one kilo i wouldn't be charging at 400 i would definitely scorch the coffee you know what i'm saying so uh gold i think you're doing everything right T taste these two which one do you like the best which one do you think equates to that 87.8 scores almost 88 points that's that's very high high scoring is is this a head turner for you i would be asking that yeah i would i would see if this aggressive roast right here is is uh, giving you more of a nuanced cup a more interesting cup versus this one where this one i feel like it's gonna be more on the sweeter, roastier side. Um, and maybe that's good. And let these rest against each other. Let them rest for many days. Taste them at five days. Taste them at a week against each other. Cup them against each other. And uh, see what you can glean. See what you can glean from these two really cool experiments. Cause this is hot and fast and this is low and slow. And that's, that's really good. I mean, just for learning, learning sake, and you go, okay, I did, I did this hot and fast, low and slow, like, and I'm not tasting everything I want to taste in the cup. Let me try something in the middle, and maybe that was your reference three, but I didn't get that uh, through the phone. But yeah, I like to do these videos just because I don't want to type all this this stuff out. Um, it's easier for me to like get into a flow state and like almost have a conversation with you with this, but um, yeah. Looks like you're doing all the right things. Having fun, having fun, aren't you? This is a really great um, exercise even, or something to do on purpose, like let's go hot and fast, let's go low and slow, let's find this out. Okay, cool, all right, questions? Put them in the comments or hit me up in the DMs. We'll see you in the next one, bye.